you know. And then in addition, we saw giraffe and zebra and m you name it. We saw everything. And, the re you know, that is actually extraordinary. I mean, some people go to Africa and see two of them, you know. We saw all of them, and I mention it because it allowed us the next day to shift gears. Because what we were able to do is on our Jeep, we took the conscious decision to go out on the ride and to take no cameras at all. To just go out and to be present to whatever experience the bush wanted to present to us without the action of recording it, other than in our memory cells, you know. And at one point, we asked the driver to stop the Jeep and to turn off the engine, and we just sat there and listened to the intensity of the African bush. And, you know, we talked about it later, how, you know, we had to take the time, first of all, for the experience, and second of all, we had to discipline ourselves to do something different from what our habit was. And third of all, we let ourselves be inspired from what was around us and inside of us. And I think it's safe to say we'll be utterly changed forever. And, you know, you don't need to go to Africa for that experience. I mean, do you know that there is only one place in the world where we have coastal redwoods? Right here. Do you know that Bodega Bay is legendary in its seascapes and landscapes and, and mind-expanding views? Uh, you know, and it's not always in nature. It's like, what about a concert like the one we're offering? Or what about um, the movie we're showing? You know, it, it, it's not so much what as the question, do you place yourself in environments to be opened? That's the real question. Because not all moments of inspiration are the same. I mean, there were other moments on this trip of inspiration in which the inspiration left us thoughtful, like, you know, people's opinions of us Americans. Or, or moments of inspiration that left us tender, like, well, like the inspiration that we felt at the Apartheid Museum, you know, where we learned about uh, the recent history of South Africa and its emancipation, you know? Now, this was the kind of inspiration that comes from hearing about hard-learned lessons, about um, learning again about triumphs over injustice, about learning again about the potential for cruelty that exists in us, about... Um, learning again about the resiliency of the human spirit and, and, and then again the accompanying resolutions that uh, we might personally have made to attempt never to repeat the errors of our ancestors. You know, that kind of inspiration as well. So it's not so much what or where, it's do you place yourself in that? That's an act of self-love. Allow that, you know. And somebody once said to me, well, TV inspires me. Well, of course it does. You know, I just saw the other day a, a show about critters that collect blue objects to decorate their nests to attract their mate. Fascinating. Or somebody said to me, movies inspire me. Well, of course they do. I watched The Boy From Mars three times. It was the only thing available on the flight. And syrupy sweet as it was, I found it to be quite inspiring. Or somebody will say, a game inspires me. Of course it does, because inspiration comes for you from wherever inspiration is. But do you go to it? Do you give yourself those moments? Or have you fallen into a rut? Which brings me to the fourth and final point, balance. You know, balance for me is so important because I have to watch out that I don't get all strict and fundamental on myself when I'm trying to fix up everything, you know. <laughs> balance is actually an act of self-love when it is the act of making room for everything. 
you know. Maybe balance is when you make space in your life for all of the times of strict discipline as well as those times of strict indulgence. The times where you're organized and forward moving as well as the times when you are lost and rambling. To make room... Well, actually, what I'm trying to say is not something new and it's been said before better in an ancient text. And it goes like this. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to slay and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather up stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to, time to keep silence and a time to speak. And I want to fast forward to the 14th verse of this chapter because the writer says something in it that is the key to activating self-love. He says something like, and I have learned that we cannot add anything, nor can we take anything away from those things that God hath made. And that is the key, not only to balance, but to activating love in your life. Because what it is inviting us to do is to take in the world. And to realize that this is our home. To accept it. And to call it good, just like spirit did in the legend. And acceptance is love. But we will get to that. For today, I just wanted to leave you with some practical points for how to begin this journey. Some of them in the form of questions that come from the January 29th reading for you to maybe savor and enjoy and see if they will stimulate you into a deeper appreciation for what God has made in you. It says this. Do you treat yourself well? Do you take vacations? Do you have downtime? Do you take personal time in which you are at liberty to do anything or nothing? Do you give yourself adequate sleep? Do you exercise your body and feed it nutritious food? Do you take time to indulge in the things you love doing and to be with the people you love being with? There it is. Just a direction to begin. So as we deepen in this consideration of love, as we return, we may be centered in an all-out love affair with what God has created in you. Let us pray. There is only one life, and that is God's life. Call it life, I don't know what else to call it. The all in all, the great everything, the initiator, the architect, the, let's call it the mind. That which is in and through everything, the cause of everything, it's visible, invisible, without center, without circumference, without limit, without beginning, without end, the ground of all being, that. We begin our prayer with that, knowing that no word can contain it and no name will ever name it. But we lean to it using words like life and love.